back to the Mindbender Mental Performance Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Mindbender Mental Performance Podcast. I am Kowalski. Thank you for joining me today. Today, a very, very exciting and special episode for you today. Why? Because it's fucking today's. So without uh, any more hesitation, let's dive into it. Today, part four of Leadership and Coaching Styles from the book, Coaching the Mental Game, by the pioneer of the mental game on the Mount Rushmore, the mental game in big league baseball and baseball in general and sport, Harvey Dorfman. El lugar es aquí, el momento es ahora. You see the lip sweater up there. Is it a Raleigh Fingers quite yet? Maybe not. Is it a Keith Hernandez? It's getting there, right? I'm not going to compare myself to, to Mattingly or, or an Eckersley, but I'm certainly getting close to Haborski, known as the Mad Hungarian, for those who are, when you know, you know, some of the greatest upper lip or lip sweaters in history. As mentioned today, we're going to dive deep into part four of our ongoing breakdown of Harvey Dorfman's legendary book, Coaching the Mental Game. This is a must read for anyone serious about coaching, leadership, or mastering the mental side of baseball. So, Let's quickly recap where we left off last time. We talked about leadership and coaching styles, and we started to get into how personal development is a key factor in leadership. As we know, personal development comes before professional development. Let me say it again. The best leaders aren't the loudest voices in the room. They're not the ones barking orders or breaking clipboards, although sometimes you got to scare them. No, no, no. The best leaders are the ones inspiring others to, to really push beyond their limits, what they even know that they're capable of, getting them to believe they can do what they didn't think was possible. Leadership and life really is about adaptability. Harvey really nails it down when he talks about adjusting your style to the needs of the situation. And I think the comparison is awesome. He draws a comparison in the book between Bozo the Clown and Hamlet. I mean, think about that. It's not every day you hear a sports psych guy talk about going from clown to tragic hero. I certainly feel like both every day, but it's spot on. If you're naturally a lighthearted, joke-telling, easygoing, cheeky dude, that's great. But if the situation calls for a little Hamlet, serious, introspective, even heavy shit, you better be ready to channel that energy too. As Dorfman says it, it's not about who you are as much as what the situation demands. You don't get to just be yourself all the time if you want to be an effective coach. You've got to have the flexibility to be a different version of yourself when the team or the moment requires it. So if that means being Bozo on one day and Hamlet the next, then you better get good at that shit. You're not coaching a sport. You're coaching people who happen to play that sport. I often say I work with people who play baseball at an elite level, I'm not a baseball player. What am I going to give his whole identity over to baseball? Next, let's talk about comfort being a killer. Dorfman in the book makes another really critical point about comfort. Here's the thing. Comfort doesn't breed growth. We've talked about it before. Growth happens in the grind. You can't have the fruits without the roots, right? Not when you're sitting pretty. Change is supposed to be uncomfortable. If you want a rebirth, there ain't going to be no birth without pain and blood. Dorfman has a great analogy where he asks people to clasp their hands together and then unclasp them and do it again with the opposite thumb on top. It feels fucking weird, right? Try it. Yeah, that's change. That's growth. Too often, coaches or hell, just really people fall back into what feels comfortable. But if your natural instincts aren't getting the results you need, then guess what? You need to change. Your style is important, but it should serve the needs of the program and the athletes, not your own comfort zone. 
That's where real leadership lies. So how about the balance between style and substance? So style is how you play your role, but substance is what matters underneath. Dorfman drops names in the book like Dwight D. Eisenhower and Vince Lombardi, two vastly different leaders, but both had one thing in common. They knew how to get the best out of their people. The misconception here is that players want either a tough guy or a nice guy coach. What they really want is someone who is clear, committed, and can get results. The truth is a coach can be tough without being a dick, and a coach can be kind without being a bitch. It's about hitting the balance. Oh, man. Yeah, like I like to tell uh, Bernsey all the time, like Bernsey and I like to, like to say, cursing flavors fucking language. Let's talk about Dale Murphy, the great Dale Murphy for a second. Here was a guy on a team with a nice, easygoing manager. The players liked him, but they weren't winning. And at some point, they got tired of the, hey, guys, we'll get him tomorrow, right? After the manager got fired, Murphy straight up said he felt relieved. He wanted someone who could demand more from him and hold him accountable. The lesson here, people want leadership that pushes them to be their best, not one that just keeps things easy and comfortable. Leadership isn't about being liked. It's about earning the respect and getting the best out of your players and team. And any kind of growth, that demands discomfort. Why don't we ask the fucking caterpillar who was sitting in the corner of the field, eating grass, getting fat, Next day, eating grass, getting fat, eating grass, getting fat. He thought, this is it. He had a Horton here's a who moment. And then God comes down and says, look, Caterpillar, do you want to die today? And Caterpillar's like, what? I'm just going to sit here and eat grass. This is all that the world has for me. It's right here in this little spot. And God's like, no, nah, man, look at that. Look at those butterflies out there. That can be you. But parts of who you are now? Who you are now has to die in order for you to become that. Growth demands discomfort. Dorfman talks about coaches who isolate their pitchers or yell at position players for mistakes. Let me fucking tell you something. If that's your style and it works, fine. But if you're not getting the response you want, you're fucking it up. If your style isn't serving your team, it's time to pivot. And that doesn't mean, you know, think of what pivot is. It's keeping one foot in the spot. Leaders like Dorfman understand that effective that the effective coach, he doesn't just rely on natural style. Great coaches, great players, they adapt. If you're a bozo in a Hamlet situation, you need to get serious, which means you can take the situation serious, but you don't have to take yourself too seriously. If you're playing Hamlet in a bozo world, loosen the fuck up. The point is, growth isn't comfortable, and neither is great coaching. You don't coach to feel good. You coach to make a fucking difference. On our next episode, we'll keep this conversation rolling along. We'll dive deeper into the test of leadership styles and how you can determine if your style is working based on the response it provokes. Are you getting the best out of your players? Or are you just playing a role that makes you feel good? Until next time, remember, if you want to be a prepared, disciplined, and committed ball player in the future, you start that shit today. It fucking takes what it takes, and the best is yet to come. For my Latino players, papas fritas, mas línea, mas vida. Hasta la próxima. Recuerdo, si quieres ser un jugador disciplinado, Comprometido y preparado en el futuro, empiezas esa mierda hoy. Se necesita lo que se necesita y lo mejor está por venir. The best is yet to come. Hasta luego, comrades. We'll see you on the other side. Keep bringing that carnalismo. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind.